Okay, I'm back. So what I have done is I have colored each of the colors of the uh, markers. So you can see <clears throat> there's lots of variation. And this is kind of a good idea to do this um, if you get a big set of markers like this so that you, you know, can just look and say, oh, I think I want to use that color. And then you can just find it in here. And I did it by the trays. So like this is the top tray this line and then the next tray and the, that way I can find them easily and quickly um, and then I also did the same thing with the fine line so you can see I just kind of did some lines okay and so that's all 72 of these colors and again I did it by tray so um, there wasn't enough room to do the whole tray so I just went down to the next line and then I started a new line each time I did a new tray so <clears throat> that is that and then let's see I need to keep that sort of close and so I took this paper some of this paper I cut it into tags and I tea dyed them so that they're you know not stark white I just wanted to do that I I don't know you don't have to do that you can leave them all white and use them as you like so I think what we'll start with is um, the fine line markers and I want to do just kind of a little doodle. Again, I am not like a trained artist or anything like that. So, um, you know, I mostly do crafts and I mostly do paper crafting. So this is all kind of new to me. And I have my Tim Holtz, sorry, I'm moving it, Tim Holtz glass mat out because I want to use the palette over here when we do the watercolor markers. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my black fine liner and it's right over here. And I think we'll just do a little mushroom doodle because that's just a fun little simple thing to do. I um, played with these a little bit last night. Um, this is obviously the next day, so, you know, because I've tea dyed these and done all that. Um, I'm choosing to use the smoother side of this um, cold pressed watercolor paper instead of the textured side to do the doodle. When I do the watercoloring, I'll be using the textured side. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of draw a mushroom on my little tag here, and I just kind of start. And they don't have to be perfect because mushrooms are not perfect. And they can be silly and whimsical and just fun, you know. They don't have to be the um, perfect, realistic uh, mushroom, unless that's what you're going for. But this is a doodle, so I'm just going for more of a fun kind of a thing. And I'm going to put a big fat base on him. Like that. Okay. And then we're going to just add some color because these fine liners are great. I really love, um, I like them a lot. You know, even just doing the little palette of them was a lot of fun just to see all the different colors. And they all... All the ones that I've gotten, I didn't get any dupl duplicates, and they all um, write very well. So, all right. And the cool thing about the fine liners is that you can, um, like, do a design or something, and you don't have to color it completely in. You can do like cross hatches where you do the lines one direction, and then you do them the other direction, and it looks colored in just because the line is so fine. <coughs> Sorry, got like a frog in my throat. So again, I'm just going to doodle some, some dots here on my mushroom. And I like to do kind of like the Zentangle sort of thing. Put one here. So I like to color, you know, cover the whole thing. So this is one I've done in the past. And I know this is super duper busy, but um, kind of the idea with the Zentangle, how I kind of learned about it is you're filling up the whole space right so you don't want tons of negative space I mean obviously you're always going to have some but the idea is to kind of fill in the whole thing so that's just kind of how I like to do it but you can obviously just draw the mushroom do that and maybe a few colors here and you could be done so um, you don't have to do you know and you don't have to make it hard either just do all kinds of little like I'm just doing circles I'm not trying to draw perfect circles because for one I can't and two you know what fun is that if you're just this can be very 
soothing, I think, to do these kind of things. And relaxing, so. Hope you're all having a great day. I know I may have mentioned that already in the last video, I can't remember. Because um, like I said, this is the next day after I did the unboxing. <clears throat> I just wanted you guys to be able to see everything, and then I knew I wanted to make, you know, some tags, and so I couldn't do it all in one day. But it's fun to see. And these are not like, um, these are a water kind of a, I don't know what you call it, but anyway, they will bleed into each other is what I'm trying to say. I don't know how you say that, but anyway, they will bleed into each other. So, and then I can just, I'm going to put that one back so I don't lose my spots because I'm good at doing that. I'm sure eventually I will do that. And I'm just choosing kind of a, a brown sort of a color, brownish orange. And I'm just going to come in here and do dots, colored in dots this time. But I really like these fine line markers. They're great. Like, I don't have any that are like low in ink or anything like that. They seem to be very good. And you can color stuff completely in. It's just nice because they are such a fine line that you can just, um, you know, do some lines and it looks fully colored in. So that's kind of cool. That's sort of the idea. If you watch really good artists <laughs> do this kind of stuff, um, with the fine line markers, you know, they'll draw whole, huge, beautiful things with, you know, just lines, essentially, line drawing. And on this, I'm just doing lines. So the cool thing with doodling and, like, zentangling and those kind of things is you can, um, you can just do lines and zigzags and dots and circles and... You're just filling the space with whatever you feel like. And there's not a whole lot of rules. It's just sort of a relaxing thing to do. And it doesn't have to be like ruler perfect or anything like that. Yellow. <laughs> and I could have drawn, you know, the outside in an orange or whatever as well. There's, you know, endless possibilities really. And I'm just kind of doing another line. It is kind of close to this one on this side. I'll bring you guys in a little bit closer. I know this is hard to see this stuff. I'm trying to keep it like right here. And so I'm going closer to this, well, I was going closer to that line. But yeah, I definitely find this very relaxing to do. I'll do another kind of a green, a lighter green. And I'm going to go right next to the yellow one. And there's going to be some white spots, but um, I'm not that worried about it. If you don't like the white spots, then you can definitely fill them in completely. Yeah, I watched when I knew I was going to do the Arteza after they contacted me. Um, and I, I am an affiliate with Arteza, so if you are interested in the products that I link, you will get 10% uh, off, and then um, I also get a commission from that if you're interested in buying them. Okay, so I think what I'll do, I'm trying to figure out what color I want in that space. What's this one? This one is a 118. It's that one. I don't think I want that one. So 
Maybe do a lighter one in that larger space. So now I'm just going to do like some... Oh, I don't know, almost like partial figure eights, you know, just, um, why can I not think of the word for that? Not a zigzag, but a, <laughs> I don't know, almost like ribbon candy or something. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see I'm not doing it like identical every time and my big hands probably are right in the way where you guys can't see. And what this does, you'll notice, is suddenly, even though you have some of the negative space, it starts to feel like it's all colored in. Or, you know, when you just look at the piece, it feels colored. I don't know how to, how to describe it, but even though it's just partially done. I made a little boo-boo there, but it's fine. Okay. There's that part of the mushroom. And, you know, normally I probably would have take, you know, take more time and, like, really get it the way I wanted. But because of doing a video, I don't want to completely torture you guys. I'm sure already this isn't the most exciting thing in the whole world to watch, but now I'm just going to do kind of a bigger circle. And sometimes it'll be at one side, sometimes it'll be at another side. I always think of like when I was a kid in the 70s when I think of mushrooms. I don't know why. Like, um, the colors and stuff for some reason. So the, these colors really kind of remind me of that. Sixties and seventies, I guess. Just a few. Okay, and then I'm going to take, I think, some more green. And I'm just going to go in and do just dots. And I'm just touching the pin to the, oops, there's another one I missed. I got the right yellow, I hope. So yeah, I'm just going in, oh, there's a couple more, oh my goodness, Amy. <clears throat> I missed like all the little ones, it's like I just went right over the top of those. You guys are probably like, what is wrong with you? <clears throat> oh, so many things. Funny how you get like, I call it tunnel vision when I do videos. I don't know <laughs> what that's about, but it's really annoying. I think other people get it too. I don't know. You'd have to tell me, but um, uh, I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah. I mean, I'm always dingy, but I seem to be much worse when I'm videoing for some reason. And then we can come in with like maybe a lighter yellow. And I'm doing kind of two dots. Kind of just wherever they fit.
but these are way fun to play with these markers I have to say I really like them thank you so much Arteza for contacting me it's, it's great and I love that they're an American company like that's really cool too okay so that just gives it a little, little lift there and I'm going to take um, a different green and I'm just going to kind of go in here and do some dots. And my cat's outside and she's just going to sit there and meow until I come and let her in. Of course she had to go out right before I started a video. one's really wet. So like I said, obviously if I was just making this on my own, I would take more time and be a little bit more careful. But just to get the idea right. So see, I just think that is super fun to play with. And then, you know, you could do more to that tag um, once I figure out where I might want it or whatever. But I'm going to ink it around the edges a little because, you know, I can't help myself. And the nice thing about these is they're nice and thick, these tags. You could stamp them, which is probably what I'll do to do the watercolor, to show you the watercolor thing. Um, because like these, like I said, these are not, if I get, if I took my watercolor uh, pen, you know, right now and put it on here, it would all bleed out because they're not permanent like that. Okay, so I'm going to stop there with that and I will probably revisit it at some point, but um for now, I'm going to move on to the watercolor so we have time to kind of show you everything. So I'm going to get a new tag here. I do like that though, how it came out. And I'm going to use my palette, so I'm going to have to come out oopsie a little bit. I'm wondering if you guys could even see that whole thing. I probably moved it. I hope I wasn't off screen. All right, so... Um, Let's see, I have this stamp of a rose, and I got it from, I got this magazine, and they were free with it, so I don't know, I don't even remember what the magazine's called now. Oh, uh, it's Crafts Beautiful today, Crafts Beautiful. So, I don't know if that's even available, I've had them for about a year. But anyway, just so you know where I got them, if you happen to see them on Etsy or eBay or wherever. So I'm going to use my archival permanent waterproof ink here and I'm going to stamp a rose. And I was trying to kind of draw some things myself, but again, I am not this this kind of artist, <laughs> you know, like that's not my thing really. But um I did do this one just drew it and watercolored it and all that, but um it takes me quite a while, so Like, I've, I've drawn pretty much my whole life, but I just am not, like, I'm okay at it, but I'm not, like, fantastic at it, so. Alright. I'm actually better at paint than, like, acrylic type paint than probably anything. And some of this is going to hang off, but it's okay. Did I do the rough side? Oh, yes, I did. Okay. I thought, oh no, I did the wrong side, but I didn't. I have a piece of lace stuck inside of my ink pad. Isn't that great? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure this is all pressed down. Okay, 
It's not perfect, but it will work for our purposes here. Okay, and then we're going to use our Arteza 48 Real brush pins, and these are awesome. I love these. Like I said, my daughter has like a set of 12 that we play with every now and again. But this is cool to have so many more colors. That's super fun. Okay, so I also have got the Arteza uh, brushes that I showed you guys. So I think that's what we'll use. I'm probably going to use this littlest one uh, because, you know, that isn't a very big area there. And I'm going to set the pins up off to the side over here. And I think I want to start with, I'm just going to put like a little drop of water there. I just want to see how much comes out of those. So quite a bit. When you squeeze that push, quite a bit of water comes out. I don't know if you guys can see it there, but it's there. Okay, so I think I'm going to use is it this one. That's 169. Nope, that's not the one. <laughs> 187 that one's really pink I think I want the more of a rosy color so that's this one and it's called rouge pink and then we'll do red And I'm going to um, do these off to the side onto my palette, just coloring a little bit of the color. You can color directly on. You can get it wet first and color directly on. I've just found that for me, this kind of um, works best. So I'm just getting a little bit on my water pen here. Oh, I should probably scoot in a little bit again, huh? And try to stay in screen and you can see I did not get um, the stamp perfectly but it's it's fine. So I can use it like this. I'm gonna get this whole spot wet right here or we can take like our red which is a lot going to be, I'm barely, I mean, you barely have to even touch the, the smallest little threads at the end of that. And it, um, you know, comes right on there. Let me get just a little water there. Because I just want a little, I don't want a ton. Actually, gonna put some red over here too. A little more of that pink. And I also have a paper towel here, which I should probably use if I want to clean my brush off. Because if you want to go between two colors, you might want to do that. But you can definitely just use the markers on their own. You don't have to do this. It's just if you want that kind of watercolor look, um, you know, that's what's going to give it to you is using the actual water. I really like the, um, those brush pins. And these are great because I only have one of these watercolor pens and it's a little bit thicker. And it works great. I love it. It's just this is nice to have some different sizes. And as soon as I'm done painting this, I'm not going to paint this whole thing because you guys get the, get the gist. But um, I'll show you the different thicknesses of those, these water pens, you know, what they look like. I 
and like I said, I am not a watercolor artist at all. In fact, it's probably one of the things that I struggle most with because I've tried in the past to do watercolor and I'm not sure why I have so much trouble, but it's just really not my thing. Like, I can paint with acrylics. Well, it's even been years since I've done that, so who knows. And I know I'm dipping into the water over here, and you're probably wondering why I don't just squeeze it. It's just I'm trying not to get, like, a ton all at once. You can also dip these into water and use them like a watercolor brush. The only thing that I've noticed with that is, and you'll notice it even when I get the tips wet at all with water. Here, I'll do it on here. I just turned that red, but see how the, white, the tip goes white? So you lose your color for a minute. It comes back, but um, it just can be a little tricky. Just kind of going around the edges here. Okay, so you get the idea with that part on how we would do that. It's kind of easier to use watercolors, honestly, on bigger a bigger scale. Just wiping off my board there, um, in my opinion. But I just wanted to do tags because they're kind of quick. But I want to show you the different thicknesses of those. Oh, that's not what I thought it was. Let's see what did I do with my pad of paper? down by my feet and couldn't even see it. So I'll show you the different thicknesses of the water pens. Okay, let's use a fairly bright color so we can see. I'll put the pink away and I'll use the red. So you can even take your color and color it right onto um, your watercolor paper and then use it like a palette, you know. You might not get as much color that way though. See this watercolor paper is really, <laughs> it's hard to get it to do that. So some of them will um, do more of a bleeding effect and uh, you can do your palette right on it or right on a piece of paper but this one isn't wanting to do that very well so and I want you to see the so I can go super fine with this particular pen until it just runs out it'll just get lighter and lighter and lighter until it's just water and then it's all clean and you know ready to use for a different color if you want to okay this is the next size up and that's the it's the same pointed tip on it I'm going to squeeze it over here just to get some water running through it. And we'll dip it right into the ink. And you can see this is going to give me a wider line. I really like these. These uh, work really well in my opinion. You just probably don't want to squeeze this or push this. Um, over your artwork like you know do it over <laughs> get it loaded somewhere over out of the way because you are going to end up with a blotch if you know if you're not careful okay and this is an even bigger one oopsie I squeezed that one don't squeeze them very hard either because it the water definitely comes out but again I would not squeeze it over my artwork that ink's getting watered down but you can see it's a little bit thicker than that one not a ton though there's not a huge difference and you could get a finer line you 
if you use the tip more. So, either way. Those two aren't all that different. The medium and the larger one. And then I have the small flat loaded over here. Get some ink. You can see you can get a really nice edge too. Like if you want to come right up to something, you can get a really nice flat edge there. Oh, whoops, I was out. I keep forgetting that I'm in because I normally don't film in like that. So you guys kind of missed the whole first line, huh? There. That's the smallest fine point, medium fine point, large fine point, small flat edge. Okay, and I'm going to squeeze it off over here. I'm just loading it up with some color. And then again, you can get right up flat. And you can see that's a very different size than that one. Okay. Oops, let's get that clean. And then this one. I have never had one this size before. Those, that is really cool. I mean, I've never had any of these flat edge ones at all, but um, that could be very fun to play with. Okay, get some ink. Have to get a little more to start to get pretty watered down over there. And again, I can come right up like a flat edge and straight up. And there's again not a huge difference between this one and the medium one, but ah, but there's definitely you know some difference. So yeah, those are fun. And get the extra ink or watercolor off. Okay, and then I am going to show you just a couple of things with this actual red, just so you can see some of the things. I just have a little bit of water. So let me make sure you can see what I'm doing. You can do, you know, the straight on color. You can dip it in water, which like I said, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess that works and then it starts to get darker. So you could play with that. Have it light, like if you wanted to do shading. And then it'll start to get darker again. So um, that way, and then the way that I did it when I was coloring with you know, just having a little bit of water. Oh my goodness, I'm having trouble with this one, getting it loaded. There we go. Just trying to get some water over here. You can do like, if you dip it in a little water, if you hold it flat on its side more, you're going to get, you know, you can get like a thin line and then lift. And I don't know all the technical terms, but you know, you can get that nice brush line. Like if you want to do a leaf or something like that. So, um, and I'm not going to try to show you different brush strokes because I just don't know enough about that. So. Let's see, what are we at? We're at 34. So I'm going to try to do what I like to do with watercolors. And, um, you know, like I, I don't mind doing stuff like this. It's just I kind of like to do my own thing again closer to that doodling. So I'm going to use the little pen again, this one. A uh, water pen, that is. And I'm going to take some yellow. And I should probably wipe off my mat over here because I kind of have a mess. Which 
should probably back out a little bit so you can actually see. That's what I was using for a palette. That's the nice part about this Tim Holtz uh, glass mat is you have your very own palette if you do like to paint. And you can do with, you know, acrylics, whatever. So that's really fun. I'm going to make sure my pen is clean over here. And then I'm just going to kind of like doodling, you know. I'm just going to take my and kind of do a little bit of a ruffly stroke like that. It almost makes like a V. I guess I should probably use a different color, huh? Can I come in again? See how it's kind of like a little V? I'm just loading up my brush again. And then I'm turning my paper a little bit. And I just kind of start in the middle and I just fan, you know, just basically wiggling my brush. And I don't know what kind of flowers these are supposed to be. I'm not being technical, you know, trying to make it look like anything specific. I'm just kind of like that doodle that I showed you that I did with the watercolor flowers. Kind of just making little fans, sort of. Or maybe like almost like ginkgo in a way. They kind of look like those sort of fanny type flower things. That's the technical term, right? <laughs> Birds are going cuckoo outside today because it is sunny and nice, no rain. And then I'm going to take one of the other colors. I, I need to start putting some of these back before I mess everything up. I think I'll use like a pink. I think I'll dip it in there just to get a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of water. And I'm just touching down at the where the smallest little. Uh, is my camera not going to focus now? Oh, seriously. Okay, that's better. Uh, where the little V is, I'm just kind of touching my ink and I'm just getting the very tip 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 wet. And you might have to do, touch it a few times because you got to get the ink back to that tip. So even if you are you know not a watercolor <clears throat> you can do fun little things like this. You don't have to do super hard complicated things. Okay, so what else do we want? How about let's put this pink back and get um, let's do red. <clears throat> I'm just going to color my red over here again. Kind of watered down my red a little bit down all those. Get my pin cleaned out. And I'm really just going to do like, I'm going to kind of come up from the center again. But this one's going to be almost more square. And then I'm going to turn. And I'm going to come out here again. I'm almost going to make like a circle. It's just going to be four petals. If you start at the top and go to the smaller part, that probably works better. I just got a little crazy with the whole thing. I'm going to do one that comes up from the center, kind of like these ones, but it's going to be a little bit bigger. And it's going to go down. And I'm going to do another one. More red. I'm 
a little bit more red here. And I'm sure people who are like real watercolor artists or just artists in general probably screaming, but <laughs> I am not. I just do it because I like it, not that I'm trained to do it or anything. So, and I'm going to do one that's kind of like off to the side. I know, Jules. I'll let you in in a minute. You'll survive. You're fine. Just hanging out on the porch. Oops, am I off? Sorry. This is tricky doing these close, close up ones. some of this space just a little I still want that break you know but um, I just don't want it quite as big as that okay and then I'm gonna put a little bit of water in the middle I'm just gonna touch this red marker This paper is different than what I usually use. Usually you get more of a bleed. This really doesn't bleed. Which, you know, that's probably good. Most people probably, that's what they want. But I kind of would like it to move out a little bit. Yeah, it's just not going to. Okay. I need my black pen. This is the only one that um, it, you can tell it leaked a little bit, but I mean that wasn't a big deal because it was inside there and it didn't get on anything. So I'm just going to take a little bit of black and go right on the end of, end of that one. And then this one's not as good, but I'm going to just do a little thing right down here. This. I'm just going to kind of put some dots and they're going to bloom a little because they're, um, man, my camera is just not good for this. Oopsie. Because of the water. So I apologize that that was probably all. This one's really gone. Just giving it a tiny squeeze. Eh. There, it bloomed a little bit better. So I guess if you add the color and then do it, it blooms a little bit better. Okay, and then we're going to take some green. I'm kind of just going to dip it a little bit in that little puddle of water that I have because I just want kind of that illusion of like there's grass or stuff growing down here. And it doesn't have to be super specific, you know. It's just the idea of of the grass growing down there. 
I'm doing a video, Aiden. I'm going to take a little bit darker one. I'm just going to go in a few other little places. And I'm just barely touching it and pulling it like I'm not doing anything much. Oh, that was bled really bad. <laughs> uh, isn't what I wanted it to do. Okay, let's see. Let's do some more red on there. Let's see if we can't get that to. Do you have a good walk? Yeah, we talked for a while too. Well, I figured. <laughs> yeah, that one's not great for sure. Okay, well, if you don't have that happen, <laughs> what did I do with my fine line markers? So, I'll give you the gist because, you know, it doesn't always work out the way you want it to. And like I said, doing these little tiny ones is a little bit rougher than the larger ones. I like these trays the way they have them so that you can pull them out with your fingers. Here, I'll come out to the. Oops. See these? The way these pull out, I like. But they're kind of tricky to get back in and they want to get caught on the edges of the metal tin. But it is a metal tin, so if you wanted, you could just take them out of the trays and keep them nicely in the tin. So that's nice. Okay, so kind of what I like to do if I don't make a mess like I did is I am just going around fine lining and I am not touching every, uh, you know, I'm not connecting every section. I'm just kind of going around it like that. And I probably should have just done this and not done the black in the center. So if I was you, I would maybe not do that. I've not done a one of these, <laughs> like poppy type things. But you can see I'm just kind of going around haphazardly. And it doesn't matter if it goes out there and it's a white spot. That doesn't matter. And you're going to get some of that texture from the watercolor paper. And I'm just going to do these. And you can add, you know, greenery. So just that idea. And you can keep adding stuff. Kind of like I did here. This is all a mess up over here. Don't don't worry about that. But um it's just along this line is what I'm getting at. So, so you're just having those stems come down. You're going around each little individual thing. I just did some like three dots. And these are just dots that I um, did in purple. And then I drew like almost like little flower things like this sort of. And they don't have to be perfect because you kind of want them to have that brush look. That's kind of the thing that I did. I just drew them all over. And some of them are just little like ovals or circles or whatever. But um, it kind of makes it look like butterfly bush or something. I did a little bee there. So yeah, just play around. Those are super fun. Um, the markers, 
I really like, I really don't have any complaints at all. I think um, they're great products. I mean, like I said, I'm not a pro like maybe people that can afford really nice ones, they might find something. I don't know, not that these aren't really nice. I just mean like if you're buying like a $25 pen or something, you might have <laughs> a better result. I don't know. I've never, never had anything nicer than these are really nice in my opinion. So I would definitely um, check them out if I was you guys. And like I said, there will be a discount code in the description box below this video. And it says more info or more. And there's a little gray uh, arrow that you just click on and it goes down into my description box. And I often have information there on where I get stuff or, you know, who made it or whatever. So definitely always check that out. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this. Let me know what you think and we will chat again soon. Bye-bye now.